New to Premiere Pro CS3 is this great smart search feature, which you'll find at the top of the project panel. Here we can just start typing in something we want Premiere to search for in the project panel. This is very great because it's dynamic, meaning that as soon as I hit something, let's say, for example, I want a clip that starts with A. So I just have to type the letter A, and then everything with the letter A in it pops up. And then I'll type in AR, and then we have AR in Martian, AR in Year, AR in Barring, and AR in Army. Add another letter to that, such as ARM, and there's only one file that matches my search criteria. Only one file that has ARM. To clear out this search field, simply hit the X, and it's all blank, and you're back to square one. Now, you could also change the search criteria. So basically, this is saying, find whatever this is in this area. So we were looking for ARM in the name of the file. But we could also search according to the label, search according to the media type, even search according to the frame rate or any one of a number of these things. So let's say I'm searching for frame rate. As soon as I type in 23, there's only two clips that have 23 within the frame rate. So I'm going to close out my search window here. And let's go back to the capture window. I'm going to go to File Capture. And you remember that when we were talking about capturing footage, we talked about how you can put in the name of the tape, the clip name, and you could also put in description, scene, shot take information, and a log note. So if you did good at setting this up when you were capturing footage, then you can use that information as search criteria when you're looking for stuff in the project panel. So maybe you can't remember anything about the clip at all other than that it was taken in the beach scene. Just use that as your search criteria or your client. There's so much here to choose from which to search. It's just amazing. And as I've said before, if you can't remember any one of these things about what you're looking for, then it probably never existed in the first place. So <laughs> there's so much to choose from here in the new smart search feature. Again, it's dynamic in that search field. Just a great new addition to CS3. In this segment, we're going to look at creating a storyboard. A storyboard is basically a plot out of what your final edit's going to look like. You might draw a picture for every scene. Typically, you would want to create a storyboard before you'd ever even start shooting your movie. It's probably the most important part of the pre-production process. That way, when you're out in the field and you're shooting, you know exactly what you're supposed to be looking at, what the camera angles are going to be, how things are going to animate, and all that kind of thing. Well, there's a great storyboarding feature in Premiere Pro that's kind of hidden a little bit. Using the storyboard feature of Premiere, we can match our initial storyboard, hopefully, created before we even started shooting. So I'm going to bring in some clips and we'll show you how to use this here. I'm going to double click to open up my choose object dialog. And in the chapter three folder, we have a folder called getting in car. As we click this open, we'll see that it is an infinite supply of clips that need to be assembled. And these clips are basically a sequence of a woman getting in her car, turning on the car and the radio and the heater and that type of thing, and then backing off and driving away. Right now, it's just a big mess in alphabetical order. So we got to put these together. Now, I am way too lazy to go in and command or control click on every single one of these. And even to shift click, ah, I don't even want to have to bother with that. So I'm just going to select the folder, the entire thing, and hit the import button. That'll bring in the entire folder. Now, if there are any files inside that folder that Premiere does not support, you will get this warning dialog box. This is no big deal, though. We're just getting warned about a .ds store file. A .ds store file is a file that a Mac platform creates to help it understand the files. If you're a Windows user, you'll see .ds store files all over the place when you work with Mac users. But again, Mac users, you will probably see this all the time. It's nothing to worry about. You don't want this file in your Premiere project anyway. So I'm going to hit OK. And there's our folder in its own little bin and all of those clips. Now, as I mentioned before, we can click on them and get a preview here at the top of the project panel, but that's going to take a long time to do. So what I'm going to do is create a storyboard here. The way we do that is actually by going to the bottom of the project panel and changing the view from list to icon. When we change the view to icon, let's double click this here, we can see all of our clips just like a storyboard. From here, we could just click and drag to rearrange clips wherever we want them to go. Kind of like one of those really annoying games that probably costs about three cents to make that you used to get out of a gumball machine or out of a cereal box where you have to shift the puzzle pieces and then move pieces to where there's an empty space. It's kind of like that type of thing. Except that we're dealing with video, so it's a little bit more fun. Say, for example, 
this clip, which I know is a precursor to turning on the radio, should definitely come after this clip, which I know is a clip of putting keys in an ignition. So I want this to go later and this to come first because I don't want my car battery to die. <laughs> now you'll notice as you start to organize these clips and move these around that when you do that, there's these holes kind of left over. It doesn't automatically shuffle and fill those spaces. That can be annoying sometimes, but it's kind of for your benefit. It allows you to put something else in its place, and it reminds you that there was once something here that you moved. If you want to clean it up, just go to the flyout menu and select clean up. It automatically deletes all those holes in the storyboard. Now, another great feature that goes along with this icon view is this automate to sequence button. What that's going to do once clicked is take all the clips from our storyboard in this order and add them to our timeline. Now I can just click this button as is, or it can make a specific selection. Let's say I just want to add clips from here to here. I click the first clip and shift click the last clip and it selected everything in between. So let's say I just want to automate these clips to the sequence. I could do that as well. Click this button. There's all sorts of options here that are pretty exciting. It's going to ask me first, which order do I want to put the clips in? Do I want to use my sort order, which is basically the way they are here in the storyboard, or we could use our selection order, the way in which we clicked on them. So we can click them out of order and have it use that as our order for our sequence. Now, lucky for us, this both happens to be the exact same thing. So I'm just going to leave it set to either one. It doesn't matter. So we're going to place these sequentially. And we can select whether we want to perform an insert edit or an overlay edit. We'll talk about what these are later, but right now it doesn't matter because we don't have anything else in our sequence anyways. We can also select a clip overlap. If we select an overlap like this, an overlap of 30 frames, which is a second essentially, we could also then automatically apply default audio and video transitions. We could also take just the audio by checking ignore video or take just the video by selecting ignore audio. I'm pretty much going to leave the settings as is and hit OK. Close my bin. And look, we already have a sequence that works out very nicely together. Now, I didn't order this right, but you get the idea. And as we get closer to the edit point between these clips, you'll see that there is an automatic transition between the two. Each clip fades from one to the other. Very nice. Now, again, I remind you that storyboarding is meant for the beginning of the production process before you ever shoot film. The storyboard in Premiere is meant to kind of mimic that storyboard. But if you don't have a storyboard, as most editors don't, and you have to make up an edit on your own, the storyboard, or in other words, the icon view of the project panel, can help you assemble those clips in a very visual way before ever adding anything to your timeline. So we've talked about importing files and we've talked about organizing files and all that kind of stuff. In my opinion, the boring stuff. And now we get to get to the good stuff. The reason why we're here editing and starting to assemble our project in the timeline panel. Now, it's kind of an intermediary step to that. We're going to talk about the source monitor here. The source monitor is used to edit clips before we take them to the timeline. So I'm going to import a file here. I'm just going to double click in the project panel. I'm going to go up a folder to the chapter three folder and import just the face. Hit import. Now we add clips from the project panel to the source monitor by either clicking and dragging and dropping or by simply double clicking the file. Notice that this file has not been added to my timeline. It's only showing up here in the source monitor. Again, we use the source monitor to make a preliminary edit before adding a clip to the timeline. So if I drag my CTI here, you'll see that we have a cool ninja spinning. <laughs> This looks a lot more adorable when you're going back in slow motion. And so he's spinning again and spinning again, and then finally, boom, the face. Oh, there it is. And then after the face, he does another cute little twirl. <laughs> Look at him go. And then he stops and poses for a cute little group shot. So what we want is just the face. So we're going to add just the face to our timeline here. So what we're going to do is get to where he stops and rests. That looks like a good spot. And let's go ahead and set the end point for this clip here by clicking this button. That basically trimmed the clip to start at this point. Then we can drag a little bit further off before he does his final beautiful, fabulous twirl. Let's <laughs> stop right there. Go ahead and set the out point. And now we need to add this to our timeline. We can click either the insert button, the overlay button, or we could just click and drag in the source monitor window and drag to our timeline. Now, I can't really see it too good here, so I'm going to hit the backslash key 
to maximize that. And now, as we play this back, you can see in our program monitor, our timeline only has his face, just the face. Now, if you watch the segment on the capture window, you'll see that there are a lot of familiar elements here. We have the standard playback controls. We also have the shuttle and the jog, as we did when we were in the capture window. You'll see those same controls here in the program monitor. So just to recap, the source monitor is what we use to make preliminary edits before adding clips to our timeline. The program monitor shows us our actual project. So let's talk a little bit more about adding clips to our timeline and what these video layers here are. Now going to move on to talk about layers in video. Video layers in Premiere work very similar to the way they work in Adobe Photoshop, Adobe After Effects, and other Adobe applications. And there's a few extra tricks here in Premiere as well. So even if you're familiar with layers from other applications, I would recommend still watching this video. So now that we're done with our cute little ninja guy here, I'm going to go to the Source Monitor drop-down and select Close. I'm going to import from the importing file the Army of Zombies movie and hit Import. Now I'm going to drag Army of Zombies straight to my timeline. Notice that as I drag up and down, I change the layer that this video is on. Notice also that the corresponding audio changes as well. So if I were to let go of my mouse here, my video is on video layer 3 and my audio is on audio layer 3. For now, I'm just going to leave it on video track 1. Now there's a great feature in Premiere when you're adding clips to the timeline or moving them around. It is Snap. I'm going to let go of this. I'm going to drag this little guy, which is the current time indicator, abbreviated CTI. And basically, this little figure here tells us where we are in time. So right now, we are 19 frames into our timeline. If we wanted to drag this clip to 19 frames in, we can click and drag and move our clip. And once we get close, you'll see that it kind of snaps and we get that firm black line. That lets us know that if we let go, it will snap to that point in time. Also, when we drag a clip, to the very first frame of our timeline, we get that same black line indicating again that this is snapping to the beginning of our sequence. So now let's add another layer. Let's add the Just the Face movie to this video layer. Now as you can see, because the Just the Face movie is on top of the Army of Zombies movie, we can't see the Army of Zombies movie where the Face movie is. Since the zombie movie is bigger, we see it along the edges here. If we were to click the Army of Zombies footage, and move it above the Just the Face clip, then we would no longer be able to see the Just the Face movie. So again, it's very important to be aware of the stacking order of movie layers. Layers on top obscure the view of those beneath them. We can also temporarily toggle the visibility of a layer by clicking this little eye icon, which is on the video layer here. So if we take off the Army of Zombies layer, then we're left with Just the Face. <laughs> Later on, we'll talk about how to change the opacity of a layer for compositing. So we can kind of blend these layers together. You could also add additional layers or tracks, as Premiere calls them, by right-clicking in a blank area of a video layer and selecting Add Tracks. And there's a lot of options here. Essentially, we could add as many video tracks as we want here. Hit OK. And now we have Video 4 and Audio 4 as well. One last little trick here. I have this row of buttons here that we're not seeing on the other layers. To see them for other layers, we just have to click this little triangle to expand the layer. Now we see these little buttons for video 2 as well. And we can even close video 1 to conserve some screen real estate since we don't have anything currently on video 1. These options here are pretty much for animation, so I'm going to leave those alone for right now. But this little button here determines how we want our layers displayed in the timeline panel here. Currently, show head only is selected. Head refers to the first part of the beginning of the layer. So when the option says show head only, it means show a thumbnail at the beginning of the clip. If we wanted to show a thumbnail at the end of the clip as well, we would select show head and tail. Now there's a thumbnail at the beginning and a thumbnail at the end. We could also change this to the extremes to show name only and no thumbnails, or we could select show frames, which shows us all the frames of the video, or as much as it will fit in our view here. Now, at first, this may seem like the be-all, end-all solution to be able to show every frame on every video layer. Well, when you have a lot of video layers, that tends to take up a lot of screen redraw time. It slows things down quite a bit. So get in the habit of naming your layers and your files well, and that way you don't have to show all the frames like this. Typically, the default show head only works just fine. Be aware that if we close the layer, we won't see the thumbnail. So again, expand it, we could see it, close it, and we can't. 
So we've talked about bringing footage into our timeline here, and we've talked about the layers, but let's move on to the next movie where we're going to talk about sequences, these containers that hold all of our video and audio and all of our animation and basically our project in a nutshell.